Okay, part three. I know so much information. So as I said in the last video, there's amino acids that basically work as yin and yang, right? We've got our glutamine and we have our synaptic GABA. So this is the yin and the yang to keeping the emotional tides of the brain balanced. So when we think of um, the glutamine being fired when we're in fear and it's over amounts, abundances of glutamine being fired and, and released, that's creating neural pathways and for us to access memory, access the trauma. And when we think of GABA, synaptic GABA, well, we take Ativan and clonazepam and benzodiazepines to actually give a, our brain a flood of GABA, synaptic GABA to calm us down because that's what that does. So that's the yin and the yang. But when we talk about this independent amino acid as extrasynaptic GABA, when we're in a state of trauma and fear, and this is active and there isn't active amounts of, of glutamine, it is going to store that memory and create neurosynapses and neural pathways in the brain on a different frequency, the AM frequency, not the FM. The FM is our conscious, the AM is our subconscious. So we have no way to access that memory unless we're in that exact state of trauma, that exact neural pathway. It's interesting, but this is what they're finding. And this is why some people repress memories and some people don't. Because when there's ample amounts of glutamine being released, we have access to, mem to memory, right? We can memorize it. We can remember it. But when that extrasynaptic GABA is being released, it's burying it and hiding it on a subconscious level. This is why hypnotherapy can work to repress memories. Now, as recent studies have shown, um, um, gaboxidol, which is a drug that they've given to mice, and it's like a, it puts them into like a sedative state, um, where, and then they give them a little shock in their little, you know, box and cage and whatever. And then they let the drug wear off. The mice go back into the same environment, have no recollection of the trauma and the shock at all. No memory. They're running around frantic, happy little things. And then they give the, the gaboxidol to the mice again. Um, and they instantly freeze. So it puts them back into that AM frequency of trauma. It follows the same neural pathway that the trauma was stored on, that they can't access on a conscious level. This is repressed memories. And this is why I think this is gonna debunk that theory of false memories. Not saying that it's entirely not true, but this is pretty amazing stuff. So this, when I talk about AM and FM frequency, I'm talking you have to go right back into that AM frequency exactly in order to, to um, bring up that repressed memory.